The mirror of time imagine standing before a mirror. Not a mirror of glass and silver, but a mirror made of light. A mirror so powerful it does not simply reflect your face, but bends time itself backward, revealing the universe as it inhaled its very first breath. This is what the James Webb Space Telescope was meant to be. Not a telescope in the ordinary sense, but a time machine, a device to turn darkness into memory, to let us witness creation itself. Its design was unlike anything before. Eighteen hexagonal mirrors, unfolding like golden petals in the void, forming a perfect eye, an eye meant to stare across billions of years. Launched into the cold silence of space, Webb's mission was daring in its simplicity, to peel back the cosmic curtain, to search the blackest skies, to find the faint glow of the very first stars, the first galaxies, the first sparks of structure in a sea of nothingness. For generations, astronomers believed they understood what Webb would find. The story seemed settled. First, the Big Bang. Then, a vast silence a dark age lasting hundreds of millions of years. Slowly, hydrogen clouds would collapse. Stars would ignite. Galaxies would form, small and misshapen, primitive, fragile, clumsy in their beginnings. That was the expectation. The further back you looked, the simpler the universe should appear. Wisps of gas. Faint smudges. Hints of structure, but nothing complete. But when Webb's golden eye fixed on a patch of sky so dark it was thought to be nearly empty, what emerged defied every prediction. Not haze. Not formless smears of dust. But galaxies. Fully formed. Organized. Rotating. Alive with stars. It was like opening an ancient diary, and instead of seeing childhood scribbles, finding entire chapters already written in perfect handwriting. And they weren't isolated miracles. One after another, galaxies bloomed out of the darkness. Some with spiral arms curling like ribbons in a dance. Others heavy with brilliant star clusters. Some already carrying black holes blazing like lanterns at their hearts. This was not chaos. This was not a beginning. This was finished architecture. Galaxies that by all accounts should have taken billions of years to exist were already standing tall within a few hundred million years of the Big Bang. It was as though the universe had skipped ahead, leaping past steps in its own blueprint. As though skyscrapers stood tall in a world where bricks had yet to be imagined. The mystery deepened when Webb's instruments studied the light of these galaxies more closely. Its spectrometers, tools that break starlight into chemical fingerprints, revealed unexpected elements. Oxygen. Carbon. Iron. These were not the simple gases of the early universe. These were the heavy elements, the ashes of suns that had already burned, already died, already exploded as supernovae. Not just once, but in cycles. Many cycles. Whole generations of stars had already lived and died in a universe that, by our understanding, was barely old enough to crawl. These galaxies were not simply glowing with new stars. They were enriched with the materials of worlds. Metals that could build planets, gases that could form atmospheres, ingredients that could one day sustain oceans and life. The picture was no longer of a quiet nursery, gently rocking its first children. The young universe was a furnace. Raging. Exploding. Collapsing and recycling matter with astonishing speed. It was not crawling toward complexity. It was sprinting. And with every new image Webb sent home, the question grew louder. What if everything we thought we knew about the beginning the impossible universe and then came the most jarring revelation of all. Webb uncovered a black hole billions of times the mass of our sun, already sitting at the heart of a galaxy less than 400 million years after the Big Bang. Today, such giants are already puzzles. 
Even in our current cosmic era, we still don't fully understand how they grow so large. But in the earliest dawn of time? It was cosmologically absurd. Black holes are supposed to grow slowly. A massive star collapses. Then, over billions of years, it feeds on dust and gas, gaining mass grain by grain. Yet here was a monster so massive, so soon, that no simulation, no model, no textbook could explain it. This wasn't a newborn that grew too quickly. It looked like a titan born fully grown. To make sense of it, scientists began reaching for radical possibilities. Perhaps primordial black holes were born directly from ripples in the fabric of spacetime itself. Perhaps exotic forms of dark matter accelerated growth in ways we cannot yet detect. Or perhaps the laws of gravity and time themselves behaved differently in those first moments of creation. These were not minor adjustments to our theories. They were rewrites of the universe's origin story. And the contradictions kept multiplying. Webb's ultra-sensitive instruments revealed patterns woven into the very structure of the cosmos, spirals, ratios, and fractal geometries, where randomness should have reigned. It was as if chaos itself was wearing a mask of mathematics. Not art, but architecture. A hidden script running through the bones of reality. Then, something stranger still. In a region of space thought to be empty, Webb detected faint traces of complex organic molecules. Not simple gases, but carbon chains, the seeds of amino acids, the building blocks of life. And they weren't attached to planets or stars. They were drifting freely, carried across space for more than 13 billion years. Which means life's ingredients were not a late addition sprinkled into the universe billions of years after the Big Bang. They were there almost from the start. Life, it seems, may not be an accident. It may be a built-in feature of the cosmos itself. And then came the most unsettling image of all, the flower, six galaxies arranged like petals around a central mass, spaced with eerie precision, rotating in near-perfect synchronization. The odds of this happening naturally are microscopic. Some dismissed it as gravitational lensing. Others as coincidence. But for a few, the symmetry felt too perfect. Too deliberate. As if placed, waiting for eyes like ours to notice. And then arose the most disturbing speculation of all. In quantum physics, the act of observation can alter the outcome. But what if that principle scales upward? What if the universe itself responds to being observed? Some web images appeared subtly different between data runs. Patterns shifted. Alignments bent. As if reality itself were aware of our gaze. Could it be that by peering into cosmic dawn, we didn't just discover the past, we awakened it? The James Webb Space Telescope has shown us galaxies too mature, black holes too massive, chemistry too advanced, and patterns too precise to fit the universe we thought we knew. These discoveries don't just stretch our theories. They snap them. And in their place rises something stranger. Not only science, but a sense that the cosmos may carry intent. Maybe we didn't just uncover the memory of the universe. Maybe, for the first time, the universe remembered us. So the question is no longer what did Webb see? The question is, what saw Webb? If this unsettles you, if the timing feels too sharp, the patterns too deliberate, the revelations too synchronized, you are not alone. Subscribe. Because the next signal may already be on its way. Turn on notifications.